Stray is a phenomenal game and while playing through it I had a thought. Could you beat the game using only a joystick? In Stray you run around, climb, interact, beam, shake, talk and navigate menus, all of which are required to beat the game. Could this all be done using one single joystick? Weird idea, I know. Steam has a very flexible input mapping software and this challenge would require me to push it to its absolute limit. The rules? Make a layout so you can beat the game with only the joystick. No remapping of the in-game controls, it must work out of the box. I would need to cram in movement, inventory management, talking and actions. Oh boy. I thought of some compromises. I knew you wouldn't represent all the inputs in the game individually. However, what I can do is map one action to multiple inputs. Let's talk movement. I came up with this layout. Joystick forth and back is the same as normal, but pushing the joystick sideways would both walk and turn in that direction. This multi-input alone essentially removed the need for another input for turning the camera. Sometimes the camera got stuck in a weird angle, but luckily walking forwards reset it fairly quickly. To explain sprinting I need to get a bit technical. The input mapping software has the ability to send additional inputs when the joystick is in what's called the outer ring. Or basically, sprint when the joystick is at the edge. So I did just that. I needed the movement to feel fluid. I knew that you needed to jump over obstacles and opted for the Mad Lad solution to hold the jump whenever you were sprinting. Initially I thought this was a stupid idea, but after playing around with it for a while, tell me, doesn't this flow nice? This is all done using one single joystick. I considered having to press the joystick to jump, but decided not to. I thought that a much more appropriate input would be to meow and shake off circs. Another thought was to meow when running, so you could just tap the joystick rapidly, but that could draw unwanted attention. So I made pressing the joystick the action to meow. One thing which I've had in the back of my mind the whole time, and the reason why I even attempted to do this challenge, was that Steam Input Mapper has the ability to change layout while holding a button, and this includes holding down the joystick. The idea is simple, hold down the joystick and change what the joystick does. So for all following inputs, I'll assume the joystick is being pressed down. This essentially gave me 4 additional slots to put the inputs in, and the outer ring if needed. And this is when it hit me. Because I had bound the joystick press to meow, which is the B button, whenever you were in any form of UI, pressing the joystick would instantly close it. The solution to this, while still allowing for running while meowing, was to have the B button be assigned to the joystick up action. Let's talk about jamming as many different inputs for one slot. I made one critical observation. Whenever in the UI, I must never assign A, B or X to the same slot, as all three appear in the inventory screen. This meant that just these actions would take up 3 out of my 4 very limited set of slots. Or did they? The game is a bit quirky. Binding both X and B to the same button makes it so we can't show B12 items in our inventory. The inventory closes before we inspect it, and showing items is required to complete the game. But check this out. It turns out when you talk to someone, the show item input is processed first and we actually can show items. And I later found out that if you inspect the item in your inventory, you can actually show it to B12 as well. This means I can set both X and B to the same slot. And because Y never appears in the UI, I can put it together with A. I was a bit worried the controls would interfere with each other, but it turned out to work pretty well. What I've just had done was to take 4 integral buttons and assign them to only 2 slots, and still not interfere with the game too much. It was a bit tedious navigating the UI when I had bound the outer ring to include jump, the A button. Tilting the joystick too far instantly selected whatever menu option was highlighted. If I instead rebound my jump button to space, then it wouldn't select options in the menu, but would still allow me to jump while playing. The scratching mechanic was a real breakthrough. One of the buttons for scratching is the right trigger, the same button as sprinting. But, something I realized that I didn't know before, was that although the game shows you two buttons for scratching, you only need to use one. I still needed to map the inventory, the flashlight, the defluxer, and the pause screen. Let's focus on the flashlight and the defluxer. The flashlight has a toggle button, and the defluxer has a hold to use button. One thing that was pretty convenient was that if you tried using the defluxer, even if you hadn't gotten it yet, it would automatically start the flashlight. You couldn't close the flashlight, but for removing one entire button it was well worth the cost. I put the defluxer in the right slot and called it a day. 
that left me with one slot left for accessing both the menu screen and the inventory. I didn't want to combine the menu screen with other actions, so I assigned it to the last slot and instead focused on how I could cram the inventory with the other inputs. I took a step back and looked at the controls again. The defluxer button was the same as the previous category button, so this was one input given for free. Because switching categories loops, we can navigate between both categories with just one button. I tried putting the inventory on the same input as Y and A, but it made interacting a bit wonky. However, you only interacted with things in safe environments, so if something was clunky it wouldn't be lethal. I also tried putting it on the same input as pause, and to my surprise it worked. It paused the game and once you unpaused it would open the inventory. But in terms of how seldom I opened my inventory in my last playthrough, I felt it was a good compromise. In the end I think this has more to do with personal preference than anything, and I ended up putting the open inventory together with the Y and A buttons. So finally, after lots of tweaking, I felt I had managed to make a control scheme which made it possible to beat the game with just the joystick. It was time to put this control scheme to the ultimate test. Yeah? Hey, it's me from the future, and I just want to tell you that you're going to f***ing die. Huh? It turns out you actually never stand still when you use the defluxer. Ah. So here's what you're going to do. You make holding down the joystick forward, press both the X and B button, and running forward while sprinting, and activate the defluxer at the same time. Oh wow, that's a lot of inputs for one action. Well yeah, but unless you want to spend hours dying, you have to use this layout. One more thing. Yeah? The hold down right action, which previously activated the defluxer and changed inventory layout. Uh, yeah? Well, change that to the button 2, which is the button that toggles the flashlight, but also changes the inventory category. Oh, thanks. Uh, w wait a minute, uh, hold up a bit. Hello? Hello, it's the future future me. Uh, turns out you need to put the X on a different button, because you can't use items when you open doors, so you're sort of stuck in an apartment. Oh, I just want to get this video done with. Oh yeah, so do that as well. And with that information acknowledged and implemented, it's time to move to the next section. Hey guys, Bibi here. Today we watch me play the overwhelming of the year with a handicap so immense I had to redo the controls three times before I could finish this video. In this game of the month, the first boss is the menu screen with the ultimate attack accidental save wipe. We ditch our friends and take the scenic route down to Earth's core where we find my hometown after 8pm. Before our first enemy encounter we get utterly wrecked by the camera angle, after which we continue our journey with the precision of a dumpster truck. While we attempt to outrun the literal Zerg, we mash and subscribe the joystick faster than you can say these nuts. Then we encounter the second boss, Vertical Space. After getting that drip, we find the Causer of Pain, Destroyer of Runs, Argyle of Salads, the Use Item Prompt. Then we ride a bucket. In an attempt to rescue the dock, we get stuck in a wall and then encounter the unbeatable boss turning around. Using UV light also requires you to run into to death itself, which is a requirement for later levels, I promise. I had to restart this section more times than a Trackmania player, until I finally died so many times the game decided to just give up. After carefully escorting the dock the distance shorter than to my fridge, I realized the whole game is one prolonged fetch quest. We head into my basement where the tutorial is harder than the main attraction. Steering is a binary option and we're walking in a minefield. The rest of the level either has no enemies or all enemies. This entire level takes no more than 7 minutes to run through, I timed it. Once out we get greeted by the second phase of our favorite boss, Verticality. This entire town is a single 3 level deep fetch quest where we encounter the most irritating enemy in the game, not jumping. Other than meeting me, this town provides nothing of value. Time to commit a felony. Here we navigate like a warship in a small canal, like a go-kart on the kitchen table, like a plane landing on a helipad. This level has fewer checkpoints than stars in a solar system. We have to run around like a blindfolded horse being spanked by the janitor himself. And god forbid you see what door you just hacked. The entire rest of the game is so lackluster I had to shorten it down to this meme format highlight section. So there you have it. I managed to beat the game in only two and a half hours using only the joystick. 
The layout is available under the name Only One Joystick if you happen to have a Steam controller laying around. I'd love to know if you play the game with my configuration. There are some parts of the controls which I would like to improve on. In intense moments I often accidentally pause the game. Maybe I could use more keyboard buttons instead of controller buttons for minimizing different inputs. Yeah, hold up a minute, let me just make a phone call.